All right, good afternoon, YouTube. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about what makes an exercise good for hypertrophy. But before I get into that topic, I do want to thank Alex from Alpha Destiny having me on his channel. And I do want to welcome any of you who come from that video from his channel over to mine. I hope that my information can continue to help you and you find it valuable and you decide to stay um, as a viewer of the channel. So thank you to him. Thank you to you. And let's get into the topic. So here are some general rules when it comes to hypertrophy. One, exercise is quite simply not enough. Now, for the most part, I really do think that minimalism has fallen by the wayside and is for the most part really gone for now. It's been sent to the shadow realm. No one's really preaching it. No one's really advocating it. And when it does come back, I do think our logic, our reasoning, our overall intellect as a community will know and smell the bullshit essentially so when it comes to hypertrophy a single compound exercise is quite simply not enough for maximum growth and this is in the context of hypertrophy the best exercise for muscle growth is a multitude of exercises compound and isolation Furthermore, if you want the muscle to grow, and if you want to think about how you're going to be tracking your volume, the muscle that you're counting that volume toward needs to not just be involved, it needs to be the prime mover. It needs to be committed to the movement. The example that I use is a breakfast plate. The chicken is involved, the pig is committed, because the pig is actually dead on your plate and you're going to eat it sorry pita sorry vegans um maybe you can think of an example there i don't eat as many vegetables as you do so leave one down in the comments below what's a vegan appropriate example but let's take the bench press for example the shoulders and triceps are most definitely involved and they will grow as a result of you doing your bench pressing but here's the thing I wouldn't necessarily count it towards your volume totals for your shoulders and triceps because the main mover, the prime mover, is the pecs. So your pecs are committed in that movement, but everything else is just involved. So when it comes to how you calculate, how you add up and everything like that, how much additional volume you need to add to isolate your shoulders and triceps, that calculation is separate from the bench press. I think that's most appropriate if your goal is hypertrophy. Now that number will slide up and down depending on the movements that you have in your program, namely bench pressing, but also things like dips, um, close grip bench, um, skull crushers, you know, depending on the exercises you choose, that number, that value, the amount of volume, the amount of sets you need to grow will change. So now that we've kind of established that, what are the criteria that I use to determine whether or not a lift is good for hypertrophy? There's only three that I personally use. The first is going to be how much can you improve or progress on that lift? At the end of the day, you are going to need big basic compound movements because those movements are the most conducive toward progression and progression takes on many different ways. It can be sets, it can be reps, it can be weight, and most likely all three. Compound exercises excel in progression on all three fronts. As a result, your program needs to have them in there. Now, they don't need to be the traditional squat, bench, and deadlift. They can be um, machine press, hack squat, Romanian dead. Doesn't matter. The, pro the ability you have to progress on those movements is significantly higher than, let's say, a chest fly. But... Now that I've brought the chest fly into the discussion, where does that fit in? Well, and that fits into the second criteria, which is how much does that exercise stimulate or give that muscle a pump? And how well do you connect with that movement? So how much does that exercise stimulate the target muscle to grow? A bench press can fulfill that role, um, but it also might not. But here's the thing. Even if you don't necessarily feel your pecs during that movement, if you continue to progress on that movement, there's no way it won't get stronger. I had a very similar experience with this myself, where for the longest time, I actually didn't really com like connect with the bench press all that much. But the more weight I added to it, the more I noticed improvements in my physique. And then finally, the third um, criteria is how much do you like the movement? This is incredibly important. The reason why barbells are superior to machines, dumbbells, cables, and calisthenics 
is because I like them. I'm able to put much more effort. I'm able to put in much more intent behind the movement. If I am on a machine, if I am on a cable, it becomes more of a mental task that I need to kind of, you know, nut up to essentially. Um, I think that that phrase has a different meaning in 2022, but essentially I have to, you know, I have to have the resolve to put in my best effort on those movements. But if you show me a barbell, oh man, no, no questions asked. I'm going to put in my best effort no matter what. So most of your program should be made of exercises you like, exercise variations that you like. If you don't like conventional, you can do sumo. If you don't like sumo, you can do Romanian, stiff leg. There's all these other things that you can do to fulfill that role, to fulfill that slot. So when it comes to if you like the movement, that's a bonus. Sometimes it's going to be the case that you have to follow through with another criteria. Like you might not like the movement, but it's the only movement that you really connect with. If that's the case, you would probably benefit more from just biting the bullet you know, accepting that necessary evil and committing to that exercise. On the other hand, you can't just rely on solely exercises that feel good sometimes you do have to say fuck your feelings am i actually objectively getting stronger am i on paper and in my own physique getting bigger getting stronger those are things you have to think about and going back to the point about enjoying the movement the cool thing about working out and exercising is that there are so many variations there's no better or worse variation in most contexts. The only time it really kind of matters whether a movement is better or worse, most often and quite honestly depends on whether or not you have strength goals. But when it comes to hypertrophy, there are a lot more liberties and freedoms that you can take. If you want big biceps, the obvious answer is to curl. But what kind of curl? There's so goddamn many. Straight bar barbell curls, easy bar barbell curls, Dumbbell curls, dumbbell hammer curls, Zotman curls, uh, cable curls with a straight bar, cable curls with a rope. While there are different, while there are different muscles being biased by each variation, you have the option to choose which one you like. Same thing when it comes to legs. If you want big legs and don't like squatting, well, there's a lot of different exercises that you can use: hack squats, leg presses. There's more available to you than you think, and they are all valid. Don't let people say that one is better or worse than the other. At the end of the day, what matters most is if it fucking works. And if it works, you commit to it, you'll make it work even better than that person will ever be able to imagine. So don't even let them dissuade you. But like I said, doesn't meet any one of those criteria. It doesn't need to meet all three. I would just recommend that it meets at least one. And you need to have one exercise for each muscle group that fits at one of those criteria. So have a movement that you can progress on, have a movement that you can connect to, and have a movement that you like. Like if, for example, I wasn't really able to commit to my bicep training until very recently because I always struggled with having that ability to just say, you know what, I just like this movement, so I'm gonna do it. Because I was very much caught up into the idea that I need to only do the optimal version. I need to only do the one that's going to get me the most gains. The one that will get you the most gains is the one that you will stick to. And sometimes that's going to be a necessary evil, something like eating your vegetables. And other times it's going to be like a goddamn treat and you just can't wait to get into the gym to do it. So for a lift to be good for hypertrophy, it needs to meet only one of those criterias but have multiple lifts in your program that do meet at least one of them. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to have any more topics or ideas for future videos, please leave them in the comment section below. Um, if you would like to reach out to me for coaching, the links are in the description below. So thank you so much. Have a great day.